All right, welcome back to Email List Building Tech Guide. Today we're at module number three. And so we're going to be talking about customizing your confirmation email, that email that goes out right away when somebody signs up for your email list. Let's do a quick recap, though, of module number two. Uh, we created an email list there. We talked about when you should create a new email list, uh, when you shouldn't, what the difference is, why you'd want to create separate email lists for certain situations, and uh, we really talked about all that, and we also talked about how to actually set up the list. So if you want to head back, if you haven't done that yet, if you haven't done that, you shouldn't be here at module number three. If you haven't set your list up and don't understand when to set up a separate email list in your AWeber account, definitely head back to module number two and go back through that. And hit pause now if you need to, just go back through that. All right, but if you did go through two, you're ready for number three here today. And today's game plan is we're going to talk about understanding your confirmation email. So we're going to talk about what a confirmation email is and uh, when, what, it, what it does. Number two, we're going to talk about customizing that confirmation email and um, how to actually make it your own, make it fit your, your audience, your, your personality, your way of doing things. So the first one, understanding your confirmation email, that's what an email, a confirmation email looks like from AWeber on the right there. Basic email, it's got a link in it. That's really the main thing. It points to a link. And right above it, it says confirm by visiting the link below. So actually, do you see how, actually, I'm probably going to get into here this here. So let me pause a second. Your confirmation email, uh, Craig, read the content on the slide. Your confirmation email is the email that AWeber sends out to every person that you add or is added that opts in to your email list. It serves two purposes. Number one, it verifies that the person's email address is correct. So it verifies that they actually added the right email address. Sometimes people make mistakes. They put the wrong email address in there, and that's going to cause problems with your emails bouncing. It's not going to actually get delivered. So um, we don't want to add them to the list if it's not going to get delivered. And then also, if they just put in some garbage email address, uh, we, we have an actual stop against that. We're not, we're not accepting that as okay. If they feel like putting in fake at fake.com, you know what I mean? Something like that. We're not actually going to send them the content. So they're not going to be able to pull to get away with that. It verifies the person actually actually agreed to receive your emails. So at the same time, so it keeps the email address correct and it makes sure that somebody doesn't sign up for a, with a fake email address, but it also verifies that the person actually agreed to receive your emails. So a lot of people, you you could just technically go to your own website and opt in all your friends, right? Put in their email addresses if you know it, their name, and then all of a sudden they'll start getting your your sales pitch. That's not okay either. There's that's that's what you would call spam. If you just send out unsolicited email to people, that's not okay. And so we're not going to teach that at all here. Um, going through the confirmation email process verifies that that person actually signed up. It'll it'll send them a verification email to their email address. And if they don't click it, they won't receive any more information. So it's kind of like if you ignore that confirmation email, you won't be you won't be added to that list. So really, it it makes sure that that person actually wants to receive your emails. Huge. It's very very important here. By default, this confirmation email is very generic. So the one that you see there, I I customized it a little bit. Or wait a second, have I? We've no, actually, I think that is the default. That's the default one right there. We receive your request for information from the, now, T default 339. It won't say that. It'll actually be your list name, I believe. So if you called it the video series list, it'll say, we received your request for the information from the video series list group. You know, it's very generic. That's why you want to customize this. Before we send you anything, uh, we want to obtain your permission, confirm by visiting the link below, um, yada, yada, yada. That's the default generic confirmation email. So you're definitely going to want to customize that. Here's how to customize it. Open up your AWeber account. That's what it looks like on the left. That should be familiar to you. At the top, again, is where you select your list. So select the list. If you only have one in there, it's going to be pretty easy. But if you have several in there, select the list that you want to customize the confirmation email for. Remember, every list has its own confirmation email. So select that list from the top drop-down, and then next, see those tabs at the top? Go all the way to the right under List Options, click that tab, and then click List Settings. Now that's going to bring you to another page that has three options here on the top, one, two, three. Click number three, Confirmed Opt-in. 
And then you're going to see this page right here. There's your email right there. There's your confirmation email on the right. And you'll be able to edit it. So you have the ability to customize these parts of your co confirmation email. You can edit the subject of it. So by default, it says confirm your subscription. If you don't want it to be called a subscription, you can change it. You can edit the intro. And that's that piece above the actual link area. You can kind of, hey, what's going on? Just wanted to make sure you were okay receiving this email or that you actually signed up or whatever. Wanted to make sure that you got these emails. Click the link below so you can in, you can customize your intro. And then you can customize the signature, which is like, ah, oh, thanks, thanks so much, Craig. You can customize that signature down at the bottom. Now remember that piece in the middle where it's where the link is at, you can't customize that at all. It's it's just the same. So about the subject here, if you told subscribers that you'd send them information. Double click the subject text and change it to confirm your request for information. So you don't want to say, if people think they're signing up for a webinar or information, you don't want to tell them that they've now they've subscribed to your list necessarily. That might scare some people off. Whoa, I don't want to be subscribed, right? So make this fit what you're giving your, your people, what they think they're getting. Make it fit. Double click to edit that. Next, double click the intro text. Just double click inside there. Delete what's there. And then next, type a greeting. Type a greeting like hi, and then grab that drop down. So put hi space, then go over to the right there where it says insert field, that drop down. Click on it, and then go down to first name fix. So what that's going to do is it's going to say hi, first name. Hi, Craig. Now, first name fix, the fix part is actually to capitalize the first letter of their first name if they didn't do it when they opted in. If they some people, they're, when they opt in, they just put, you know, if I was opting into some site, I might just put Craig with a lowercase k because I'm too too lazy to actually hold shift and push the button, too lazy to capitalize the first letter of my first name. What first name fix does is it will capitalize the first letter no matter what. So it'll kind of standardize it and make it look like a real person actually entered that in. If I send out an email that, that has the lowercase first letter of my first name, or the person's first name, they're going to know that, whoa, this this is totally automatic. This this does not look good because a real person would have had the respect to capitalize the first letter of my first name if they, if they wrote me an email, right? So first name fix is definitely the one to use there. That's going to automatically put their first name with a capitalized first letter into that greeting. And then put a comma after that. Then go down a couple lines, just as if you were writing an email. Enter, enter, right? or return, return, whatever the heck, if you're using a Mac or PC, go down two lines. And then finally, type a clear message asking them to click the link to give you permission to email them. So here's what I wrote. It was great talking with you today. Please click the link to verify that I have your permission to email you. Now, this is if you were actually talking to somebody and you added them to your list. So change this up. Say, thanks for grabbing the cheat sheet. Click below to make sure that I that the email address is correct so I can send that to you. So it's pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. I recommend doing it maybe one or two sentences is all here. Real quick, real easy. Give them a good reason to click that link. And now at the bottom of the email is the signature. So double click into there and just enter a simple thanks, followed by a couple lines and then your signature. So for me, my signature is a simple thanks, Craig. Just as if I was writing an email, I would write it that way. So really write this the same way that you would write an email to someone if you were sending them a personal email. All right, next, I say here skip over the required opt-in, um, but actually I want to tell you what that means. So typically you'd skip this over. You would just leave required opt-in on. And what this actually is, is this is, the, this is the confirmation email. Do you want AWeber to send a confirmation email? So AWeber will, and these email marketing services, they'll tell you to do it. And a lot of people will tell you do this because it keeps your list uh, accurate. It keeps, if you send out that confirmation email, it actually, it verifies those things that I talked about, that the person's email address is right and that they actually signed up for your list. But in some cases, you might just want to turn that off, which means that the confirmation email will never go out. When somebody opts in, they're automatically opted into your list. Now, downsides to that. Well, your friends could opt you into different lists and you can start getting emails. So you don't want you might not want that. And you might not want that for your subscribers either. Uh, that, so that's a downside, but let me tell you another an upside of shutting this off is that people won't think that they're subscribed to some list. And they might not that it's a bad thing, but 
I, I don't mean that you're trying to trick them into signing up. I'm saying that if if you want them to be added to a list upon registering for a webinar, you want to send them webinar details, not some confirmation email. So if you just want to automatically send them something else instead of this confirmation email and you think that's a good strategy for your business, then you'd shut this off. But I'm in no way endorsing tricking people at all. I'm not saying that. I know I kind of, something rolled off the tongue there, but that's not what I mean here. I mean, if it fits into your strategy, then you can turn this off and AWeber allows you to turn it off just by selecting off right there. You can shut off the confirmation email. And success page, I said to skip that over as well, but this is gonna be your thank you page which we're going to be overriding later, but just remember that that's what that is. It's the page that they get sent to after opting in. So nice work. Your confirmation email is all set up. Uh, this email is going to go out automatically right after someone signs up for your email list. So once you get that all squared away, we're going to move on to module number four, where the topic's going to be creating an opt-in form or a sign-up form to allow people to join your list. So we're going to get into the exciting stuff here coming up next in module number four, and I'll see you over there.